In this lesson, we calculate the systematic measurement error, carry out a significance test and calculate the measuring instrument capability. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. In the end, you should be able to judge whether the measurement resolution of a measuring instrument is sufficient and you should be able to calculate the systematic measurement error, including a significance test. Furthermore, you should be able to determine and assess the capabilities of a measuring instrument. This lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we calculate and assess the resolution of a measuring device using an example. Using the same example, we will calculate the systematic error of the measuring instrument and check whether the result is significant. In the second chapter, we then carry out a measurement system analysis. The measuring instrument capability is calculated and assessed. This lesson requires some basic knowledge of measurement errors and statistics. Appropriate lessons are available for this. Let's start with the calculation and assessment of the resolution of the measuring instrument and the systematic measurement error as well as the significance test. So, the task is to prove that a selected measuring instrument is suitable for the measuring task. The product characteristic to be measured is the diameter of this piston. Its nominal size is 60.1 mm. Before we get started, a few notes. A serial part that has been calibrated serves as a reference part. For the diameter, XM 60.1030 is given as a reference value. All random tests were carried out by the same person with the same measuring instrument on the same part at the same place. The sample size is 25. The resolution of the measuring instrument, RE, is 0.001. Before we come to the mathematical proof of the suitability of the measuring instrument, we first go through the calculation steps and see which requirements have to be met. The first question that needs to be answered is whether the resolution of the measuring instrument is at all suitable for the task. RE is the abbreviation for resolution. This should be equal to or less than 5% of the characteristics tolerance. Second, the systematic error must be calculated. The third point to check is whether the calculated error is within expected limits. For this purpose, a significance test is carried out. The fourth point to check is whether the capability index CG meets the requirements. The CG value should be equal to or greater than 1.33. The systematic measurement error is not taken into account in this capability parameter. And finally, it must be proven that the capability parameter CGK meets the requirement. The CGK value should be equal to or greater than 1.33. The systematic measurement error is taken into account for this capability parameter. So, let's start by proving that the resolution of the measuring instrument is suitable for the task. Percent RE is the resolution of the measuring instrument as a percentage of the tolerance field of the product characteristic. The value for percent RE should be less than or equal to 5% of the tolerance field. Percent RE is calculated from the quotient 
of the absolute resolution of the measuring instrument, RE, and the tolerance. Instead of tolerance, the formula contains the general term, RF, for reference. The measuring instrument resolution of 0.001 mm and the tolerance of 0.2 mm results in a value of 0.5%. This means that the resolution of the measuring instrument is suitable for the task. Now we come to the calculation of the systematic error. As a data set, we take the measurement results from the table on the left. These 25 values were taken by the same person using the same measuring instrument for the same characteristic. The mean x bar of these values is 60.1013 mm. The standard deviation is 0.0045 mm. For the systematic measurement error, it is irrelevant whether the mean value is larger or smaller than the reference value. So, whether the sign is positive or negative. Only the absolute value or the absolute amount counts. This is what the two vertical lines in the formula stand for. The systematic measurement error is now calculated from the difference between the mean value, x bar, of the measurements and the reference value, xm. From 60.1013 and 60.103, a systematic measurement error of 0.0017 mm is calculated. As it is almost always the case, when trying to draw certain conclusions based on samples, the question arises as to whether the conclusions drawn are within the expected range. So you want to be able to be sure with some certainty that the result is not a product of chance. To do this, you first choose a probability for which you can accept that the result is just a random product. For example, this should be not be greater than 5%. For this 5%, we get a factor of 0.413 via the t distribution for a sample size of n25. If you want to know more about the t distribution, you should take a look at the separate lessons which are available. The requirement is now that the previously calculated systematic measurement error of 0.0017 mm is equal to or smaller than 0.413 times the standard deviation. Only then is the result not significant and is not a random result. With a factor of 0.413 and the standard deviation of 0.0045 mm, a value of 0.0019 is calculated. Since the previously calculated systematic measurement error of 0.0017 is smaller than 0.0019, this proves that it is not significant. A correction, this means an adjustment to the measuring system, is not necessary. Now we come to the measurement system analysis. We will calculate the measuring instrument capability and evaluate the result. But before that, a little remark. Depending on the applicable customer specifications, guidelines or standards, there may be different calculation methods and specifications for certain values from the example shown here. The systematic measurement error is not yet taken into account for the capability index CG. CG shall be equal to 
or greater than 1.33 and is calculated as 0.2 times the tolerance divided by 6 times the standard deviation. If we insert the respective values into the formula, a capability index CG of 1.48 is calculated. This fulfills the requirement. And with that, we come to the final proof of whether the measuring instrument is suitable for the task. In contrast to the CG index, the capability index CGK takes into account the systematic measurement error. The CGK value should also be equal to or greater than 1.33. This is calculated from 0.1 times the tolerance minus the systematic measurement error, which is the expression with the vertical bars, divided by three times the standard deviation. If the respective values are put into the formula, a CGK capability index of 1.36 is calculated. This requirement is also met. Based on the values just calculated for the resolution of the measuring instrument and the two capability indices, CG and CGK, it can be confirmed that all requirements have been met and that the measuring instrument is suitable for the measuring task. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the five most important key messages. The resolution of the measuring instrument should be equal to or smaller than 5% of the tolerance field of the product characteristic. If the systematic measurement error is significant, the measuring instrument must be improved. The capability index, CG, does not take the systematic error into account. The capability index, CGK, takes into account the systematic measurement error. The capabilities CG and CGK should be equal to or greater than 1.33. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that. Take care and see you next time. Bye.